Welcome back. I'm Irama Kaisaidu, and this evening I'm here with Jacob Ose Yeboah, the independent uh, presidential candidate. So uh, I have some Twitter questions for you. Uh, Michael Bruce says, uh, being an independent presidential hopeful, it will take a miracle to win. What are your chances? No, my, my chances are, are very bright because the whole nation will know that we are highly polarized and the political parties, everybody, all the secret tapes coming up, all Ghanaians are actually looking forward to a unity government that can help save our lives beyond 2012. You see, Benin did it when they realized that the two parties belonging to Kirikou and Asaglo in two houses, and they saved their lives and properties going beyond. Now, Ivory Coast was adamant, and they've destroyed their country, and even up to date. So Ghanaians are more discerning, and at this point in time, the chiefs that are um, representing the religious body, the business community, everybody has kept quiet. You know, uh, it was through silence that I, 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 I came through the EC's mandate. You know, nobody thought that I could make it, okay? And then I, I pushed through the same thing silently because political politicians have been insulting our religious leaders, have been insulting our, our traditional leaders, and then they, they're putting the fear of God in the business community. Do you believe your chances them. are good? A brighter. You see, that is the miracle that is going to, it's going to be a, it's a silent revolution. It's, it's a silent revolution. That day, on the 7th December, everybody will go there and say, that guy represents unity. I see her, the number eight. I will vote for Jacob or say about right, I have another the rest Twitter are looking question for, their for you. Um, Ato There's asks, only one president, do you know that? And that is Jacob Oseyabua. Ato Kwamen asks, do you have a comprehensive energy policy? If yes, what does it say? If you could summarize it just quickly. Uh, I, I, I'm I, I can't, you. I, I see, I, <laughs> uh, over here you can see about just, just for it, I have a lot of energy policy. That is a, a speech that I'm going to give. Okay, can you give us yeah. some highlights? The highlights is that first and foremost, I've been talking about biogas. Biogas, we can just use our human scratter. People are defecating left and right center, whereas we can harness that, okay, to serve as gas that we can even supply to communities. We can use that together with other... So biogas, do you have another one? No, biogas, I, I, apart from that, you see, we, the, the sun abounds over here. We need to harness that. We need to make sure that we develop that aspect. Because if there so was solar the national, power, is solar power is, is one of them. Now we have oil over here, the thermal aspect uh, with, with the gas too. We have to make sure because the one at uh, Takwade has a combined um, um, cycle together with that of oil you know, and then gas. So we have to make sure that once we have it over here, instead of flaring up the gas at the Jubilee, we make sure that we tap them and then we can feed the plant in order to increase the output of. So when it comes to energy, you need that energy in excess for export in order that anyone can talk about industrialization. And you, 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 you are an engineer. I'm an engineer, so I know what I'm talking and, about. And I know that you've been working in different African countries. Yeah. I think it's West African countries, maybe South Africa as well. Maybe South Africa, yes, I, I've been there on several occasions on a trip. With, with okay, so trip. what have you learned? How has it affected maybe your uh, political ambitions that you have seen other African countries? Y you see, I am, you, you, we're talking about globalization, okay, which, which have to do with economic inter intensification and then political interdependence, okay. So because of globalization, whenever you have such visits to other countries, you tend to have a broader perspective with what you have to do. We're talking about country-specific advantages. So as, Ga as, as, as Ghana, within this sub-region, what are some of the specific country advantages that we can take? As, as against the other countries that and are And what visited. are they? No, I mean, the first thing is that we are in the midst of Francophone countries. So we can create a lot of employment even for English teachers. That, 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 is, that is something so simple. Now, visiting other, other African countries, we could, we could, one could also realize that we are a bit higher in terms of technology and other things. So we can create a market over here that can serve within the sub-region. Okay, that, that, that is why I say that once we have a national development agenda or plan as a nation, okay, we can create a lot of jobs, billions of jobs in Ghana. And because that one alone can actually 
help us to know that within the next 10 years, this is what we want to do. We want to maybe, let's say, become the highest producer of vehicular tires within the sub-region. So with the rubber plantations that we have quickly, we can do that. It can employ laborers, environmentalists. And, and you mentioned and so teachers. I don't think we talked about education before. So maybe I can just hear your program. We have uh, heard from um, NPP who wants to make um, education up to SHS free. We've heard from NDC who says we should rather focus on the quality aspect. Uh, what would you bring to the table it when it comes is, to education? You see, the free, free, free aspect is doable. But we need I think you to actually even say we should make university education free of yes, we can. as well. So, so far as we are doing the right thing, it's constitutional. Because the constitution mandates us that there must be free, compulsory, universal basic education. Have we done that? Have we achieved that? If we've not been able to achieve that in its right application, then what we need to do is just to ensure that we, we do that. Because that compulsion aspect of it is that we need a statistics that can inform Okay, the authority is that there is a particular child in a village, okay, who is six years old, and that child is supposed to go to a particular school. The authorities should be in the position to do that, but we don't have a system. So how can we ensure the compulsion aspect of it? And so you're saying the, the free is about very universal. doable, but where do you think uh, We're talking the about universality. Yes. You see, yes. with the universality means that and every child. In Ghana, and that is not it. cheap. So where should the money come from? Um, now different politicians are struggling to, uh, to provide the financing for this huge project. What, Look, what is your suggestion? First and foremost, we need to tackle corruption totally to minimize it to its barest minimum. That one alone, we can save a lot. I mean, have, uh, coming to think of what we are all witnessing in terms of judgment debt issues, over 610 million Ghana cities uh, and above. Okay, that one alone, if there are prudent ways of in handling our issues, we can save a lot. On the road course, uh, sometimes you're going in 2009. We submitted on our roads. We're going to make up about 30% saving because in Ghana, we don't need only hot asphalt. We also have cold asphalt as against the tube seal. Oh, they didn't pick it up. Now, there are a lot of savings that we can make. Look at the housing that they are building. Six uh, classroom blocks costing about 320,000 Ghana cities. Whereas when we do the calculation, it will not be up to that. So all these, we can save a lot and out of that. I'm saying this because of the experience that we had when I was with Anglo Group, when the cost of operation was around $320 um, dollars per ton. I mean, within um, 18 months, we reduce it up to $178 dollars per ton. Okay, and I knew when we it comes to education, you have also suggested that we should give uh, educational institutions that are currently run by the states back to religious bodies who originally built them. Yes. Uh, why the management. We... I'm talking about the management. So why would we do that? You see, uh, when you are acquiring knowledge, knowledge acquired without morality is useless for the society. You need to have a bit of patriotism and morality in you be before your education becomes more meaningful to your society. And that's why many that people are up. saying that education is nation building, so it should definitely be held by, by the state, but you're differing with that. It, 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 not, not really. You see, in those olden days, when education were being managed by the religious body, we tend to have people who occupied position with a heart of patriotism, and they managed to build this nation. But what is happening now? Now, Anybody at all can come on radio and lie to the whole nation with that conscience. And they call it propaganda. That is something which is not helping us. Or they call it PR. It's not good. So our education must have a bit of morality in order to help move this nation forward. Okay, and that so is why I've suggested that. Uh, you have now stepped into uh, some big shoes being a public figure, but you're also uh, a private man and you have a family. Uh, you're married and you have, I believe, four children. Yep. So what, what is your family saying about you running for president? No, in, initially uh, it, it wasn't easy because my wife is a shy looking type because even at church, if you ask her to chair occasion that day, she will not come. Okay, so that, that is her nature. And, and I need to understand her because that is her nature. Um, she doesn't want to be in the public eye and so on and so forth. So she, she's that type who always prays for me. So uh, there's that saying behind uh, every successful man, it's a woman. She would rather prefer praying for me and then uh, encouraging me. But now you have her support. 
Only this I have a support even together with my kids and sometimes my kids, my one TV. You know, and how old are your children? Uh, the first one is uh, uh, 15 years old, the second is uh, 8 years old, uh, the next is 6, and then the last one is 4 years. Okay. Um, so um, I wanted to, to ask you where you also come from and do you have a stronghold over there? Oh, sure. Um, I, I come usually. We, we have the Oyoko family, and I originate from Ashanti Kokofu, but my parents actually resided at Atonshu in Suta. And this one, now between these two places, I have massive support. I mean, the last time that I went there with my guys, I mean, what they are saying is that we need to spend a, a lot of time uh, within the Setra, Setra area because they are so proud that one of their own is aspiring to that position, and they knew. Um, what, what I'm capable of doing. When, when earlier you were going to launch your running mate, your vice presidential candidates, uh, the person failed to show up. Uh, have you now found a vice presidential candidate? You see, without a vice presidential candidate, you cannot pass through easy. So already I have it. And then the one and who is that? Oh, I just don't want to mention it. It's strategically, uh, we have a reason. So why. when will you mention the name? Oh, you see, it's... it's the time will come very soon. But we have a reason. We have it's quite strategic towards our campaign. Well, and I think voters would like to know who they are voting for. I mean, it's important who takes over. Would something happen? You see, the, the person is coming on board from a different angle altogether because that is something that I know the nation needs. But it's Everybody before the election. You yes, will definitely, it. definitely. Okay. And the uh, person is working behind the scene. That is so. That is why I say there's a silent revolution. There's another revolution which is also going on. That we call it the callers revolution. Those within the diaspora, those who have heard my voice, they are calling their relatives in Ghana. Say we want peace in Ghana, and therefore vote for Jacob Osaya Boa. That man can surely deliver. So, what is your commitment to peace? Would you not win? Can you promise to concede? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I don't believe that a single blood should flow on this land because someone is actually looking and for that power. That is a strong commitment to peace right yes. there. So I have my short questions before we wrap up. Coats and tie or tie and dye? Oh, I, I want tie and dye. You see, coats in a very hot environment, and that is so sad that even in this environment, you see people walking in the sun still in coats, but we are, we are refusing to, to, to take it up. So we have to become who we are. We need to live as today we you're are. wearing some and nice wax prints. Yes, yes, of course. You know. <laughs> All right, pineapple or apple? Oh, uh, my, my choice is uh, pineapple. Is it for the same reason that it's more local? Uh, not, not really local, but I have a strong um, um, taste for pineapple. Mm -hmm. so. TV or radio? Well, TV or radio. No, I prefer TV <clears throat> in the sense I, that... I think it's the right decision. <laughs> yes, I prefer TV because when someone um, is, is addressing you and you can see the demeanor of the person, you can actually fish out. And that, that is something that I have to fish out, whether the person is lying or whether the person is actually truthful to, to the audience. You can sense that. But on radio, a lot of issues go on because you see that they will be chuckling behind the scene because they know that the listeners can see But on TV, you can see who's The, the, who the TV, there. now everybody knows that, hey, so is that the next president, Jacob or Sayer Boa? <laughs> and then okay, so my last question, me. joy or seriousness? You, 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 you need joy, okay, because joy is Jacob or Sayer Boa, and joy is always impregnated with peace, okay? So we need joy in order to have peace. Thank you for coming.